Welcome to Monday night, guys. Welcome to the Note Night in America webinar or podcast. If you're listening, catch the, the replay. Honored to have you guys here. Uh, we've got some new faces. If you're watching this live, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're catching the replay, hey, we're glad to have you there. Watch it as well. As always, if you're catching the replay, I encourage you highly to make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave any comments below. We are very good about my team answering questions as we go through, but uh, we've got a very special Note Night in America tonight. I'm really honored uh, to have a very special guest here in just a second, but just want to say, hey guys, I encourage you to hang around. You're going to have a great time tonight with us, learn some new techniques or hone up on a couple new ones uh, because our very special guest tonight has just a few years of experience, just about just under 30 years, three decades. He started when he was two years old uh, doing things, but this guy, uh, really knows the stuff. Uh, I very honored to call this guy a friend for almost 20 years, known him for a while now, but uh, uh, he is phenomenal at what he does. You maybe have uh, heard of his book. Uh, Are you dumb enough to be rich? A bestseller out there. I think we're all dumb enough to be rich, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but this guy's been trained, has trained with the top 30 real estate investors, educators, gurus, you want to call that in the industry out here. Uh, absolutely. This guy has a huge passion for helping make people successful. It's just, it's, you, you can't spend 10 minutes with him without feeling it coming through his pores and how he's got a big heart for caring and wanting people to accomplish their goals, their dreams, and really take their life to a whole other level. And that's why we're really going to be talking about how to make 2021 your best cash flow year yet. He's going to be talking about some of the secrets that have worked, some of those that are working now, those that aren't working. You're going to want to take a lot of notes out there. Uh, this guy, uh, like I said, is trained with the best in the industry. He calls Fort Worth, Texas home. He is a huge fan of baseball. So I know he's getting excited about opening day here, just being about a week out as we record this live. So we are honored to have the man, the myth, the real estate investing legend, Mr. Bill Barnett, join us tonight here from his lovely home in Fort Worth, Texas. What's going on, Bill? How you doing tonight, man? I'm doing excellent, brother. Great, uh, great to be here. Honored to be here as always to see you, Scotty, and uh, join everybody on Note Night in America. And uh, so it is uh, just a hoot. And yeah, baseball. Uh, I'm still. Uh, I'm still hurting a little bit from my, my Crimson Tide lost in the uh, March Madness last night. But, hey, baseball is uh, almost here, brother. Yeah, they, you know, that was a that pretty interesting game. Them hitting the, tri the three-pointer at the buzzer to roll tide, and then they just got beat up game. in overtime, man. Great so, game. And I've yeah. been watching a lot of uh, high school and uh, JV baseball already. We got about a dozen games in so far, and uh, – about, I got about five kids that I've coached through the years that are now playing for the high school uh, right up the road here. So where my kid goes. And uh, so it's a hoot to go watch those kids and uh, just love it, man. Life's good. Yeah, and, definitely. It's fun watching high school ball games uh, and the passion and the airs and the pageantry of that. And we've got uh, high school that butts up basic community. So on a couple nights a week, the bright lights are on and we can hear the, the aluminum bats crack in. And on the weekends, it's always always takes me back a few years ago to playing ball. So but hey, Bill, well, I'm really excited. I mean, we've been talking about doing this for a while. Finally, yeah. matched up schedules uh, to work well with you. You've got some great stuff tonight. Uh, to talk about and really so relevant with what's going on in the market. Would you agree? Absolutely. You know, things are very different today uh, than they have been. And, you know, we can talk about and we will talk about how the political spectrum affects the real estate market. But man, this is, uh, I haven't seen a real estate market look like this from an opportunity standpoint in 30 years. It just, I am giddy with everything that is going on. And it doesn't matter which side of the spectrum you're on, whether you're Republican or Democrat, doesn't matter. What's happening in the real estate market is presenting some incredible opportunities for us that are unique to right now. Yeah, exactly. Well, I know you've got some slides and a presentation to share with everybody. So if you want to, I've, I've taken away the screen sharing on my side. All you got to do is hit the share the screen and pull up your PowerPoint there for you. So on the Let's Zoom control panel, you should see a green arrow that says share screen. There we go. You've done this a few times before. And then oh, there you go in presentation maybe mode. Once or twice. There we go. Look at that. Look maybe at that. Once or twice. 
I'm Gotta love it. I see. Was that Jack Planche on there as yeah, well? Just, just hold a on a second now. Don't go <laughs> steal any thunder. I'll just shut up. And okay. everybody, if you have questions, do do us a favor. Type them in the chat roll. But let's wait a little bit because I I know that Bill wants to get through this stuff. Mm-hmm. And right about an hour, gonna leave plenty of time for any type of questions. Yeah. So if you can hold your questions to the end, unless it's something wrong, I'd be willing to bet that Bill will answer your question. It goes along here, but I'll be here if it's a burning desire. I, ask a question but make sure it's relevant and on point with the material if, you, if it's not relevant we're just going to boot it to the very end so uh and take it away you, mr bill can you kill the uh the video on my end yes i can i sure can you just go ahead and minimize that we'll go from there brother all right and uh all right you are good to go bud so uh 2021 you know we're in springtime it is the most incredible time of year to be living in Texas. And I know there's a lot of people all over the country. Uh, We got folks from uh, different countries that are joining us tonight, but you know what? Uh, If you're a Texan, this is the greatest time of year. And it's the time to get radical because what's happening right now is the real estate market is changing. It's changing dramatically. Now, look, We've got some things happening uh, in Florida. We've got some things happening in Texas where our markets are on fire. They're going to stay on fire for a while. The rest of the country may not be reacting that way. So we're going to talk about some things about how to be able to recognize where the hot spots are, how to participate in those, and a myriad of different ways to be able to do that. And I want to start off the night and introduce you to uh, one of the greatest movie clips that you're ever going to see in in my opinion and take a look here how do we live a different kind of life in the year of come we're dying breathing it's going to mean something to me though a couple of days we'll move this hood across the river right into the valley now there's nothing like living in a herd. See, now that's great. Your life makes sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? You city folk, you worry about a lot of shit. Shit? Yeah. My wife basically told me she doesn't want me around. She better. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. I'm holy. <laughs> 30 years. 39. Yeah. You all come up here about the same thing, same problems. <laughs> Spend about 50 weeks a year getting knots in your rope, and then, and then you think two weeks up here will time for you. None of you get it. Do you know what the secret of life is? No, what? This. Your finger? One thing. Just one thing. You stick to that, and everything else don't mean shit. That's great, but. What's the one thing? That's what you're going to figure out. (laughs) All right. So that's my buddy, Jack Palance there. You know, yeah, Billy Crystal, one of the the great comedy city slickers. But the thing I love about that, and and when I saw the film, it, it hit me. And it's just stuck with me ever since. How spot on that statement is. You got to figure out what it is that's important to you. That's the one thing. Now, it can be the one thing in a family relationship. It can be the one thing physical. It can be the one thing spiritual. It can be the one thing uh, also in your business. And that's what we want to talk about tonight. What's the one thing in your business? Now, we all like positive cash flow, passive cash. We're going to talk about that a lot. But you got to figure out what is it specifically that resonates with me and how am I going to go out and be the best that I can possibly be. I had the uh, the great pr- privilege, Scotty knows this, uh, when I was growing up and, and came out of high school, I, I had the chance to play football in Alabama for Coach Paul Bear Bryant. And the reason that that worked was not that I was very good, because I wasn't. When I graduated high school, I was five, nine and a half, which is how tall I am now. And I weighed 155 pounds. My high school coach said, son, you're going to die. Those, those are men over there. They're, they're, they're going to kill you. And that was my dream. Well, from the end of May until August the 17th, when we reported for fall camp, 
I went from 155 to 212 pounds wearing the same pants. Went to a 44 uh, jacket, 46, depending on the cut. No drugs, no juice, none of that stuff. My metabolism changed. But here's the thing that I want to say to you. I think that happened because for four years, all through high school, I fed my mind that this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. And then my metabolism changed and it opened some doors for me. Now I got injured at the end of my freshman year and, and um, didn't get to do anything after that, but it was still one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. One of the things I treasure the most, uh, but I learned so much from coach Bryant, but it was always about you. It wasn't about, the other side. It wasn't about the other team. How does that affect us? It's not about the market. It's about us. If we're doing what we can do, we can make whatever's happening in the market beneficial for us and work for us. You recognize where the opportunities are and then you go with that. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Scotty told you I've been doing this. Uh, I wasn't around when God made dirt, but he gave me a sample very shortly thereafter. Optimistically, and, uh, because very, they control, very, uh, control the Senate and they control the House. Very tickled. So they're uh, going to get done whatever they want to get done. Once hey, that Scotty. happens, you're going to see our yeah, economy hey, going to the beginnings of a tailspin. Sounds like you've got something else on your computer turning on. No, I, I think that was you. Uh, <laughs> Not on my end. Nope. Okay. I don't know what it is on my end then. So yeah, we'll uh, go on that. Several thousand investors over the last few years, training people how to, here's a phrase I want you to get used to, over the hump. How do you get over the hump? Because this is what happens to people. They get stuck with, whether it's in their training, whether it's in their marketing, whether it's in their funding, they get to a point where they're just like, you know, I, I'm just, I can't get past this thing. Sky and I were talking about this earlier today on a different issue happened to me on a technical issue from some web stuff. I got stuck at a point where my experience and knowledge in that particular area hit its plateau. I'm, I was done, couldn't go any further. And what do you do with that? You start looking at people like Scott, like myself to be able to say, hey, Here's somebody at a different level than I am doing what I want to do. Can I learn from them? That's what's so great about my, uh, my little girl says hello. That's what's so great about having uh, books out there to be able to learn from, having courses, having classes like this, and get you to the point that you can get over the hump. And that's the new book that's coming out. Uh, we're going to do something with that later on tonight on the digital version for that. So everybody that's on tonight, uh, we're, Scotty and I are going to send you a copy of, uh, a digital copy of Over the Hump, not even published yet. You're going to get a digital copy of this. So that's only for the people that are on live right now. Uh, so if you're uh, replaying this down the road, sorry about that. Uh, that's what happens. You want to always be live when you can. So this is just something that has stuck with me through the years. You just got to get over the top. You got to get over the edge. You got to get past that tipping point. You got to get over the hump. And in your business, once that happens for you and you get on the other side and you start getting some momentum, and as you get that momentum, then you start looking at, holy cow, this is the most incredible business. Because look, you guys know this already. You wouldn't be on this call if you didn't know this. But real estate investing, whether you're doing it as a flipper, a wholesaler, whether you're buying and selling notes, whether you're doing multifamily, whether you're doing uh, commercial buildings, you're, you're doing strip centers, you're doing self-storage, doesn't matter. You're in raw land. It's the single most incredible business out there. And it's the only business that I've ever seen that you and I as regular normal Americans can get in and write our own ticket to whatever number we want to write. And real estate provides that opportunity for us. Now you got to have something. I'm, I'm a dad, man. These are my three youngins. 
you can tell by the picture there, they're uh, a little bit older than that now. Here's a, a picture that's about three or four years old. And then uh, my two little ones, and this is just a year old. They're now, uh, the one on the left is a uh, freshman at University of Texas in Arlington, going down to Austin next year. The one on the right is a freshman in high school and they're almost unrecognizable from just a year ago. So all of us have that thing. For me, it's these guys and I, my oldest one's 28. So it's what are you doing for them? What is it that really sets you on fire? See, real estate is not what sets me on fire. Now, Scotty, I, I hope I just didn't uh, blow your whole opinion of me there. You're good, brother. You're good, man. <laughs> what it is, is real estate provides the opportunities to do the things that you want to do. When you understand what you have a chance to achieve because of real estate, then you know, hey, this is where you want to be. It's the fire that burns the engine for whatever it is that you're trying to talk about. Now, here's my philosophy on, on teaching, on speaking, on instructing, on coaching, mentoring. It's always real life experience. Now, it's going to be what I've done unless I specifically say this is one of my consulting clients. This is one of my students. If I tell you that, then you know it's not. Otherwise, it's going to be personal experience because that's what you are looking for. You're not looking for somebody that heard somebody that did this, that read somebody about that other thing that maybe that's how they got it. You're looking for people like Scott and myself that this is what we do. Live, sleep, eat, breathe, drink, real estate, 24 seven, all the time. I, I had a, a guy not too long, a good friend said, when in the world are you either gonna retire or at least slow down? And I'm like, well, I'm not gonna ever slow down. And why in the world would you retire from a business like this? This is the easiest business in the world. Now, look, you gotta learn it and you have to treat it with respect and you have to treat it as a profession and the career that it is. And when you do that, you're gonna go, man, this business is really pretty easy. And it doesn't take an incredible amount of time to do it you just have to be diligent. And if you're diligent, then you are able to go over, around, through all the different barriers that might currently be holding you back. So tonight, one of the things I want to talk about is your money comfort zone. This is one of the big things that hold people back, is they get uncomfortable with large sums of money. And in this business, you have an opportunity to make an unconscionable amount of profit on deals. And if you get into a position like that, I, I remember one of the first deals that I did, this was before I even uh, ever got into real estate. I, uh, my dad was an entrepreneur, taught me to be an entrepreneur. Um, after I was done with uh, football at school, I, I still stayed at Bama and I sold uh, shoes. I sold topsiders and penny loafers out of my apartment. It started in my dorm room, I had to kick my roommate out. So I have enough room for inventory. And then I ended up getting a two bedroom apartment. And I sold so many shoes that I got through my dad because my dad owned a small chain of shoe stores in Alabama. And we would buy these shoes and I would sell them for all cash. And I bought a clothing store that was going out of business. I sold clothes out of my apartment. And you got to get used to making money. So I, I say that for this, that my junior year in college, I made more money than my dad made. That was the first time that money was uncomfortable to me. I, was, I felt guilty that that had happened. My dad was absolutely giddy. That's what it's got to be. So if you're doing the right things with your money, you all have heard this before, money is a magnifier of who you are as a person. If you're a good person, you're a better person with more money. If you're a jerk, you're a bigger jerk with more money. It is a magnifier of who you are. So if you're focusing on the good things, 
then what's going to happen as you build your business, you attract people to you. Yes, you're going to attract money to you, but you're going to attract people to you. And as you attract people to you, if you know that what you're doing is beneficial to people that are around you, the people that are involved in your transactions, and that you're being diligent with your funds, then what happens is you get very comfortable and you get past what the dollar amount is. I want you to get to a point where it's just zeros and that's it. And you're not thinking about anything else because that changes your real estate business. So to do that, you got to get radical. You can't pussyfoot around being good in this business. You're either going to be committed and go for it or you're not. And if you're not, it's going to show pretty quick. Get on board, get focused, get committed and get radical because it has an incredible impact on your family, on yourself, on the people that you care about. So if there were a way that you could explode through your money comfort zone, well, you'd probably want to know about, wouldn't you? There are several different things that are going on in our market right now that are going to allow you to be able to bust wide open your money comfort. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight is just exploding that comfort zone that you have with money and expanding your money horizon. When you look at what's going on in our country right now, for those of us that live here, we're incredibly blessed because our real estate market in Texas is hot. It's been hot since the end of 2012. It's going to continue to be hot. Now, Texans, you got to listen to me a little bit here. <laughs> we have to be careful because some of what we are experiencing right now is a little bit of a false economy for us. And what I mean by that is we have a ton of people that are moving into Texas that is keeping our market just fire hot, keeping the inventory down. There's still deals. You have to know how to look for them. There's still plenty of deals out there. You have to know how and where but man, when houses are ready for people to move into, they are just evaporating. So we have to be cognizant of that. Same thing going on down in Florida right now, same thing. And so we have to be aware of that. We take advantage of the market by saying that, hey, you know what, I'm gonna get as much property as I can out and rolling now. And as this starts to ebb, and it will, because look, there are some basic, precepts to the market that if you learn how to read them, this is one of the things that you love about real estate. I, I come from an investment banking background. That was my professional training. And so that whole battle of stock or real estate for me has never been uh, anything at all. Once I got into doing real estate, I saw all the incredible advantages that it had over stock. And so we'll, we'll go through some of those tonight and why it matters, because one of the things that happens with real estate, unlike stock, real estate cannot move in a split second. A stock can be riding high today and midday. But let's, I always use this as my example, so McDonald's. McDonald's can be just rocking along today and suddenly at lunch sometime uh, on the news comes out that there's been um, an infection that's hit some of their beef and they've had six people die and the stock will just plummet in the afternoon. And it literally is almost instantly you can do the bottom can fall out of it. That can't happen with real estate. We're too big. We're, I want you to think of real estate as a battleship. You can turn it, but you got to be thinking long and hard and you got to have a lot of room because it's a slow turn. You can get it done but it's a slow turn. So if you understand what to look for in the marketplace, your business is always on top of the market. You can't stay totally focused on one segment of the market and expect your business to continue to grow year after year after year after year. So that's how you, why you have to make some radical changes in your business so that 
as the market changes, just like it's changing right now, as it changes, you just go with it. The easiest way to get into, I learned this investment banking, to get into money is to get in the flow of money. So real estate always has a great flow of money to it. I don't have to try to create something new. I just got to get in the way of some of it. And so that's what we're going to talk about are the specific things that we can do. This is a slide that I have. Um, I've gone an entire weekend on this before <laughs> this one slide. It's um, it is the real estate market. And so you start looking at right now, we're at this top left corner. We're at about 11 o'clock. We're at the, the top of the market pricing. And, and again, for us in Texas, we've been there since the end of 2012. Our prices have just continued to go up and they're going to keep doing that for a while longer. We're gonna probably make it through this year uh, with prices up and then we'll, we'll start to see things uh, start to flatten out a little bit, which is that one o'clock position on, on our circle here, you'll see prices start to flatten. They're not gonna just fall out of the bottom. They cool off a little bit, they get flat, and then they start going down. So typically what you'll see is in that top of the market pricing, that 11 o'clock position, a typical span there is about four and a half to five years. Well, we have already been in one nine years. We saw this happen when the foreclosure debacle happened uh, that ran 2007, 2008. Same kind of thing in that we had a protracted period of hot pricing and then things start to cool off. Now, how things start to cool off, and this is where I wanna tell you about being able to function in the market and understanding the different pieces of the market. I look at a lot of different things to see where the direction of the market is going. If you know the direction of the market, it's infinitely easier to stay in the flow of money. So I look at some things, I look at the foreclosure rate. We've had about 18 to 20 months now where very quietly, behind the scenes, if you will, we have started more foreclosures than we have sold foreclosed properties, which means that we're building some foreclosure inventory. Now there's a lot of people, oh, oh wait a minute, Bill, you, you, you must have forgot about COVID because you can't get foreclosed on. No, that's not correct. You can't get evicted for it, but you can still get foreclosed on. A lot of people miss that and they, they run off and, and jump off the deep end, get themselves in some trouble thinking that their mortgage company is not going to foreclose on them. Oh, no, they'll go ahead and do that. They just won't evict you yet. And you think that's going to change? Sure. It's going to get to a point where they go, OK, enough's enough. And this thing's winding down. We're seeing that. Uh, and as it winds down, as COVID winds down, the market's going to return much more normal. And a lot of things that have not been happening rent evictions, foreclosure evictions are going to start busting at the seams. So we see that from a statistical standpoint, we're getting more foreclosures than we're selling. And so we're starting to build. We're building some pressure there. This is what starts to put downward pressure on the market. When I start looking at those kind of things, now we get a lot of uh, defaults that are cured you also start to see that number grow of the ones that aren't cured. Those are the ones that go into foreclosure. Those are the ones that create some great note opportunities as well. So you start looking at, okay, here's what's happening. And I see that flat prices are headed my way. They're not here today, but if I know they're coming, then I can build moving my business forward. Then we get down to about three or four o'clock and you start to see prices start going down. We call that a correction. Prices start going down. That will happen. They'll go down typically about 18 months. We try not to get anything too wild and crazy, but they will push down downward pressure until they hit the bottom. 
you're not likely ever going to catch when the bottom is or guess when it is. You see the bottom in your rearview mirror. And then you hit the bottom and just like at the top of the market at 12 o'clock, when you're at six o'clock, the market catches its breath. It's not doing a whole lot. It's kind of flat. It's kind of dead not going down any further, but it's not going up yet. It's re getting rested up so that it can get hot again. If you understand this cycle, you understand the things that trigger this cycle. Real estate's never a mystery. You don't have to worry about the market. You see it coming from 10 miles away and you shift your business. So we, we're going to talk about the arc of real estate here in just a minute because a lot of people get hung up in one thing. And I'm gonna tell you, when I got started in the business, that was me. When I got started in the business, all I did was HUD properties for the first three and a half years I was in the business, 100% HUD. Now, what happened was a ton of people jumped into the HUD market and the inventory was still there, but the profit dried up. And when the profit dried up, you got no business. And so you wanna always look at, if you don't have any inventory, you're not in business. You're out of business. You're OOB. So I'm always trying to, to stay on top of where the market's going. How does that affect what I'm doing in my business? And I'm not honing my business down to one thing only. I'm a rehabber at heart. I love it. I'll do it from now on. I got four going on right now, personally. But it's not the only thing to do. So you always look at, Where's the market taking me? If, if, if you're a football fan, um, you hear coaches all the time talk about quarterbacks saying he took what the defense would give him. And quarterbacks that do that usually do pretty well. We do the same thing in the market, in the real estate market. We want to go with what the market's willing to give us and not try to form the market the way we want it, but to go with where the action is. So as we get into about eight o'clock, you'll start to see the market starts slowly heating back up again and prices start to come back around. And then the next thing you know, we're right back up at top. Now, when you're going through this cycle, it's a difference in what am I looking at? If I'm at the top of the market, I'm over here at 11 o'clock, then what I'm doing then is I'm flipping, I'm selling. When prices start to flatten out, now is when I wanna start focusing on acquisition, buy and hold and on rental property. And as those rental properties accumulate through the next few years, then we come right back around to where I get into another selling cycle. And so our personal business runs in a cycle, just like the market runs in. And I can go from being a crazy flipper, running my crazy nut head off until I'm doing very little in the flip market and everything is acquisition and hold and it's rental. It may be single family rental. It may be small apartment complexes. It may be big apartment complexes, but it's all about buying hold and cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. The difference between whether people flip or whether they're buying rental property from a cash flow standpoint is what their personal needs are at the moment. If I don't have a reason for a big check, I'm accumulating through buy and hold and I'm accumulating passive income and I'm doing seller financing on some of these properties. That's going to be more and more important as we go forward. It's not a big demand on it right now because rates are so incredibly low and banks are so aggressive right now. Do you think that's going to change? It will. As it does, seller financing is going to come back into vogue. So what I want to be looking at is what I call the arc of profit for real estate. You can look at it as an umbrella, but I really want to look at the different types of opportunities that I have and how I can take advantage of the best way to be able to make money in a particular market for what the market is willing to give me. So when I start looking at the arc, I want to go through, you start maybe with wholesale then you're gonna start doing some flips. Then you're gonna get some buy and hold. You're gonna weave some notes in. 
you're going to start doing some rental property. You're going to start doing some 12, 15 unit apartment complexes. You're going to ease into 50 units. You're going to look up and you're going to see some opportunities to go into commercial, whether it, it might be self storage, might be mobile home parks, it could be an office building. Now that's not going to happen over the course of a couple of months. That arc typically takes a few years. But if you open yourself up to all the different opportunities that the real estate market provides us, then what happens for you is there's always opportunity available. The reason that Scott and I don't get freaked out when the market changes is because we've been around this thing for a while and we understand there's always opportunity in the real estate market. It just may not be the same opportunity that it was six months ago, but it's always there. Our job is to identify what it is and how do I best play in that market now? So we do a ton. People go, well, gosh, you're involved in just about every type of real estate. Yeah, just about, because that's what the market dictates. I love flips. I told you that. Got multiples going on, but I'm also in an accumulation mode right now because rental property is exploding around the country. Not a lot here, not a lot in Florida, but elsewhere around the country, rental property is going crazy. And you got to understand what am I looking for? I'm looking for opportunities to be able to up the value of those rental properties. And I want to stay away from rent control. So am I doing anything in California? No, 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 no. Not doing anything in New York. Well, not in New York City anyway. Why? Because of rent control. You can't have a business when somebody else controls your profitability. So I stay away from markets like that. And it's absolutely fine. There's more than you could possibly do. I love right now, I'm doing a ton of stuff in Cleveland. I'm doing a ton of stuff in a market that you can still buy goofy cheap houses. You can still buy houses, rental property, duplexes at fifty and $60,000. And so we're looking at more accumulation in specific markets and for specific type of accumulation. That's the arc. And the reason that we're doing that right now is you have to look at what's going on politically in our country. Everything is pushing toward, the administration is pushing toward you and I being dependent on the government. Now, I'll tell you what happened when COVID hit and the lockdown happened for Texas. The only thing that provided continual income was not straightforward rentals, but was the section eight properties. Because on the section eight side, the government never skipped paying. You may not have any interest in section eight and that is probably because you hadn't looked at it good. You may not have any interest in mobile home parks, probably because you hadn't looked at it good. I'm more interested in the numbers. We do some things where uh, we're pulling in 40, 50% a year cash on cash returns, just like clockwork. That's the kind of stuff you want to be involved in. My dad taught me that when he was uh, running our shoe stores, we would buy a lot of uh, businesses that were going out of business. We'd go buy these stores and he'd go in and offer the owner a nickel or a dime for the inventory. And really he just kind of meandered through the store and just say, I'll give you a nickel for everything in here. Every pair you got. Don't care what it is. So about 10% of it would be really good stuff. And about 80% of it would be junk because they had been running their going out of business sale. And it took me a long time. Now I'm in high school when this is going on. And I went, Dan, you know, I don't, I don't get it. You know, this, we don't even want this stuff in our store. And he goes, it'll be okay. And I'm like, I don't, I don't understand what you're doing. So then he would run these big weekend sales Sidewalk sale, no shoes, over a dollar, thousands of pairs. And, and there would be. And we set these giant tables up outside our stores 
And those were always our biggest weekends. People would come in, they'd buy 20 pairs of shoes outside and they would actually feel guilty that they bought these shoes for a dollar a pair and they would go in our stores and buy two or three really nice high profit pairs. Now, when you look at, if you buy a shoe for a pair of shoes for a nickel and you sell them for a dollar, see, I get that now. I didn't get it then. It took a while. When you're getting a great percentage return, you go with where the business is. And right now, when you can get 40 and 50% a year cash on cash return in section eight, I'm going to tell you, that's something you ought to take a look at. I'm going to tell you how you can do that a little bit later on. Yeah. Uh, so take a look at the profit of all the different types of investing in real estate that exists right now. You want to be looking at where the business is moving to because it's moving and it's moving more and more toward the rental side of the business. That's about to get hot. That's just the nature of the beast. It's, we will happen last. Texas and Florida will happen last because of all the people we have moving in and all the businesses that are moving in. But the rest of the country is going, that's already happening and it's gonna get hotter and hotter and hotter. And if you have an opportunity and you understand how to evaluate those markets, I do a thing, um, called properties in your in your PJs and properties in your PJs is how you can get online and break down a city that you've never been to and you can break down the real estate market there. And so if you understand how to evaluate those markets, then you look at, I've been to Cleveland. I hadn't been there several times, but I've been there a couple of times. Um, never lost anything in Cleveland. Don't have any reason to go back. Will I? You bet. Because it's a great real estate market for a specific type of real estate and a specific price range of real estate. When you understand where the hot pockets are because you're learning about the market, then this business just keeps moving and moving and moving and you end up loving it. And you start looking at all the different spokes in the wheel, if you will, of the profit arc and the eight or different eight to 10 different ways you can invest in the market. Now, I hope you got your pens out Been taking some notes because I want to give you the single, this is a flat statement, the single most profitable investment strategy on the planet, period. This is something that just, uh, it's simplicity will blow you away. And then you'll think about it and go, holy cow. So you ready? All right. Make sure that you're not out of ink. Got a clean piece of paper? Jot this down. Buy low, <laughs> sell high. Oh, man, you suckered me in on that, Bill. Actually, I didn't. If you think about our business, it's always about the numbers. When you're looking at the numbers, that's where this comes from. If you know the numbers inside out, if you're buying notes, you're not ever overpaying. If you're buying rental property, you can own it long enough that you'll probably somewhere down the road come out of paying too much for it on the front end. If you're buying flips and you pay too much on the front end, you're committing a financial suicide. You've got to understand the numbers and you have to understand. And I'm going to tell you, I think Scotty would agree with me. Most investors don't understand how to do numbers properly. I'd say it's probably in the five to 7% range that really understand numbers. I'm amazed at how many investors that I teach that when I start talking to them about the numbers, they go, no, no, I don't do it that way. I do it this way. And we go through and I'm like, why in the world would you do that? Because your numbers are not going to come out right. And if your numbers are not coming out right, your checkbook's not going to come out right. Your bank balance isn't going to come out right. So this buy low, sell high, and we sell everything that we sell at the top of the market and usually a premium to the market. And we build a value in there. 
if you understand delivery of value for your customers, then what happens? And it doesn't matter what part of the business you're in. When you understand that what's important to me when I deal with my clients, and it doesn't matter what type of client it is, it's about value. When you deliver great value, price goes out the window. When you look at houses in particular markets, and, and people tell me this all the time, that they, they see one of my houses, and before they found out it was my house, they knew it was my house because of the way they look, because of the quality put into them. And I fight with investors on this all the time. Oh, you way overspend. I'm like, no, I make more money than you do doing it cheaply. I create value for my buyer. And if I'm creating value, then what's happening is my price goes up and it's an easier sell to sell to a premium to the market when you have value. And so if I can tell you anything, it's as you're building your business, think about your clients and how do I create more value for my clients? I've, I've coached um, youth baseball for nine years and just absolutely uh, just love it. And one of the things I try to tell my kids and, and some of them get a hold of it pretty good. I'm like, look, you know, you need to learn how to be a catcher. I want to be a catcher. Yeah. That's not the point. You need to learn how to be more valuable to your team. And we may not need an extra catcher right now, but you know, the next team that you have an opportunity to play on might need one. You need to learn how to pitch. So that now, does everybody have the skill set for these? No, and that, that weeds itself out. But a surprising number of kids that are in that 9 to 14-year-old range uh, can pitch. And so they get proper training. And it's how do I become more valuable? And I'll give you a great example of this. Yeah, I was so proud. My, my kid was playing last year on the school. Um, and he's a pitcher first baseman. He's a power hitting first baseman. And... They lost two games in a row because they had a center fielder that apparently didn't understand that when you play center field, you're supposed to catch the ball in the air. And so my kid got frustrated the, the second game that, uh, that they were in the process of losing because of poor center field play. And he went to the coach in between innings and said, he can play first. He can't play center. I can play center and first, put me in center, let him come to first. And he spent the rest of the year in center field. And the coach came to me after the game and said, wow, never had a kid come to me and say something like that. And I said, it's, it's what we teach them to do, to recognize how can I be more helpful? How can I be more valuable to the team? That's what you want to be to each of your clients. When you're looking at selling somebody a house, when you're looking at selling somebody a note, You've got to be able to see past just the dollars. When we sell houses, we're always looking at the family. The price will take care of itself. How does this family fit? Do they fit the neighborhood? Is this a great place? Are you going to walk away from this transaction just grinning that, man, this is a great family that's now got a great house. I'm tickled I was able to put them into that. Am I providing in multifamily great opportunities for people that need low-income housing, moderately priced housing, because of things that are going on in their life that they may not have control over? When you do that, it's just a good place to be, and it's a good business to be in. But you've got to understand this. You got to understand these numbers, buy low, sell high. So here's what I want you to do for a little bit, uh, just for a minute or two. We're going to keep going on here. But as we uh, get into the final stages tonight, I want you to be thinking about what are the top three things for you personally that are holding you back from where you think your business should be going into this year, next year, and the next five years. And I want you to get in the chat and send over to Scotty these are my top three things. If you just got one, send one. You got two, send two. But what he's going to do, he's going to take a look at those. And after we get wrapped up, we're going to touch base on those things so that you can get the, what you needed out of being here tonight. 
every one of you are here tonight because there's something that you were hoping to get out of tonight. Maybe it was, I, I can't get enough funding to do the deals that I want to do. I can show you how to fund till the cows come home. That's probably the single strongest thing that, that is part of who I am and what I teach. Private money opens up the door for your business to a point that there are no boundaries. If you understand private money, then you understand I've got no limitations on my business that involve money. I may have some that involve time, but I don't have any that involve money. So maybe that's one of your things. So we'll talk about private money, how to raise money, how to put deals together. If you understand structuring, and if you're buying and selling notes, you got structure going on. You understand that. One of the things that uh, uh, Scotty may not even know this about me in the 80s, I created a television show called Dawn, Dynamic Achievers World Network, ran five days a week for three and a half years, mostly on NBC affiliates uh, on about 55, 57% of the nation. And it was a half hour morning motivation show. And Zig Ziglar was a very dear friend of mine. Zig did eight of the shows. Mark Victor Hansen, the guy who wrote the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. Mark did four shows. Uh, there, there you, many of you uh, are probably old enough that you remember a guy named Victor Kayam, Remington Shavers. He's the guy that did that commercial that said, yeah, I like the shaver so much I bought the company. Vic did a couple of uh, episodes of it. Uh, Norman Brinker, the guy that founded Chili's, did two episodes. I mean, just had an incredible lineup of people year in, year out. And after three and a half years, it died almost instantly. And when television dies, it's an ugly death. And it died because I didn't have it properly structured financially. And we ran out of production money and we were done. And it was just done in the blink of an eye. I went to work for Merrill Lynch for one specific reason, to learn how to structure financial deals. It has been an incredible asset in my real estate. When I start looking at how do I put a deal together, if you understand a little bit about the money side of it, you're gonna be fine. And you can put deals together. Always be thinking, yes, how do I do this? Not it can't be done. Yes, how do we get this done? And if you have that mindset, you're gonna get it figured out. So let's talk about what it's gonna to take to be the next 12 months to be the best 12 months that you've ever had in your business. I want you to take about 15, 20 seconds here. I want you to think about this time, I want you to think about the end of March, 2022. And you're thinking back over the past 12 months and it's been the most amazing 12 months you've ever had in your business. What would have happened? What kind of deals would you have done? Number of deals, profit you would have made, families you would have impacted. What would happen to your family? What would be happening to you? Think about that because if you start thinking about that, then you get focused on how do I make that happen? Second thing I want you to think about, what's those barriers? What's the barriers that are holding you back from doing more deals and bigger deals? More deals and bigger deals. Hunt was asked one time how he got so wealthy and the response was, I just kept making bigger deals. That's tailor-made for real estate. Just keep making bigger deals. How can you look at other markets that are hot and get involved in those didn't have to be in your backyard? One of the things I love about commercial and multifamily specifically is that I can do them all over the country. Because if the numbers are right, we can make it work. And that's what you want to look at. And then there's going to be a, a new wave of seller financing hitting our country. You want to make sure that uh, you're looking down the road at that and being prepared for that so that you can be on the front of the curve. That's where the bulk of profit is, is on the front end of the curve. So that's what I want to do. 
if you start looking at those things, those are the type of things that get you over the hump in your business. And that's what we want to look at is how do we get over the hump? How do we unlock the art of getting over the hump? So all of you tonight as a thank you for being here. Scott and I are going to send you a digital copy of Are You Dumb Enough to Be Rich? The Amazingly Simple Way to Make Millions in Real Estate. This is the second edition. Uh, both editions were national bestsellers. Robert Allen wrote the Ford, great uh, mentor and friend of mine through the years. We're going to send you a copy of this for those of you that are on live tonight, uh, just as a thank you. And then we're going to talk about uh, getting you over the hump as well. So you got to be thinking about this is a seller's market right now. That's going to change. Am I taking advantage of profitability in the seller's market because I got to be ready because now it's going to turn and it's going to turn over the next couple of years into a buyer's market. How do I participate in that? How am I staying on the front end of the curve of that? How am I getting the most action out of the dollars that I have available? And then how do I expand those dollars? So I have more that I can do. If pro and con are opposites, is progress the opposite of Congress? Just a thought. I just had to throw that in there. All right. So can you afford not to be part of the hottest real estate market? Sky, I laugh about this all the time. This market is insane. And it's not going to change anytime in the immediate future for Texas. You've got to be a part of it. And that alone will start getting you out of your money and comfort zone. So I want to introduce you. This is a friend of mine down in Florida, Bob Richnew. Bob and I uh, did a little training together. Two weeks after that, I got this from him. May 31st, picked up a check for $23,000 on an assignment fee. Here's a picture of their first flip. It was really a wholesale deal. I uh, put it under contract for $255, sold it for $280, and he had it less than $1,000 tied up in the deal. That's a great rate of return. When you make $23,000 on a $1,000 investment, and total time in and out a few weeks, that's a home run. Those are the kind of percentage returns you want to look at. That's knowing your numbers. That's buying low, selling high. When uh, in 1999 and year 2000, I was a pit crew member for this car 42. That's a guy named John Hollinsworth, who is actually from Dallas, a driver. And um, I was in the pit crew because I always wanted to be part of a race team. And that happened because of real estate, because of some opportunities that real estate presented to me. One of the things that I learned when I was in IndyCar was that money equals speed. Money equals speed. What does that mean, Bill? See, if you've got more money for your team, you buy better engineers. When you've got more opportunity for you as a real estate investor, you get better mentors, you get better coaching. And that's where the speed comes in. Don't learn all this stuff on your own. Don't go out there and learn from the school of hard knocks. Scott and I both have more scars than any of you need. And I'll just go ahead and speak for me. I got enough, Scotty, for both of us, brother. So and anybody <laughs> else that's on here, you know, you learn from other people that have been there and done that already. So they keep you out of the traps. That's what that's all about. So in real estate, money equals speed. Here's a deal that I got from Jim, who's one of my clients. He said, today I bought my first house using an A strategy. I teach an ABC strategy in, in one of the segments that I do. Uh, I bought this house using 100% terms. You know what it is. When you're looking at real estate, all you've got is money and terms, price terms. He was going 100% terms. He already had a buyer lined up gross profit of 40 grand. And then at the same time, he said, look, I'll be buying my sixth house this coming weekend using the same strategy and gross profit on that was about 60,000. I am amazed that I have already having to consider capital gains issues on these properties. Great problem to have. Amen, brother. In closing, I've been able to change my life and the lives of my family forever based on many of the personal tips that you provided. God bless you and your family. 40 grand is not a bad paycheck. A lot of people don't make that in a year. That's a pretty average kind of deal. That's not a great deal. That's an okay deal. Pretty average. 
So let's take a look at that cycle, money by speed, be thinking about the cycle, be thinking about how do I learn from people that are at a different spot than I am. Now, Scott, have I got your permission to tell you a little bit about the radical training? Yes, sir, go right ahead. We'll take this uh, quickly here. So I wanna tell you about the, this private workshop that I'm doing in Houston, May 15 and 16. Now, wherever you are in the state of Texas, if you're not in driving distance to Houston, Southwest Airlines gets there pretty cheap. It's over 12 hours of just pure cash creating content. How do we, it's forms that I need, the processes, the systems. You ramp your business up through being systematic. You eliminate mistakes by having systems in place, having checklists. So we're gonna talk about all of that, creating all of that, giving you the examples that I've been using for years so that your cash creation is solid. Now we sell those for $9.97. Now that's two people at $9.97, two full days. We'll get in how you sign up for that here in just a minute, but $9.97. Then uh, a couple of guys that are down there, Steve Anderson, Danny Volz down in Houston, they, they said, hey, Bill, you know what? The training we received was applied to one of our recent deals. The advice, support, and course content you gave us helped us make a little bit over $26,000 on our last deal, which closed February 23rd. This was pre-foreclosure house. Took less than two months from purchase to sale. It was about as pretty a deal as you can do. That's the kind of thing you want to do over and over and over. Now, live events I thrive off of, love them. I learn well that way, I teach well that way. But you also have to have repeated learning. That was what was so great uh, about buying CDs, buying videos, and now everything's downloadable. So I, I have a video training course that is literally 26 hours of video, different from the two days in Houston that I sell that for $14.95 so that you can repeat that over and over and over and over and over again till you get it. It's just right there. You use it again and again. So if I've got the 12 hours in Houston, the live event, $9.97, and now I've got $14.97 for the three-day download, 26 hours of video, then I got about $2,500 worth of goodies for you there. And then I have my home study system. The Are You Dumb Enough to Be Rich Home Success System. That sells for $14.95. Now, what the Dumb Enough Success System is, is a three-day training system that is audio and about 380 pages. It's actually another book uh, of real estate content in there three full days and you see all the, the CDs down there and uh, there are three master manuals that go with that. So you've got 1497 in the home study course. You got 1497 in the 26 hour video course and you got 997 in the two day live training. We're up to about four grand here of total value. And the thing that I mentioned to you earlier you always provide more and more and more value so that price is not the issue. So when you look at the two-day private training event, you look at the home, 26-hour home video training system, you look at the home success, are you dumb enough to be rich success system, we're up to $4,000. And I got this from Terry Waldrop, who's just a dear friend of mine. Terry used to be the the men's basketball coach at Texas Wesleyan. And he said, you know, I'm in at 98,000, property comps out at 135 to 140, about $3,000 in repairs on it, worked out well thus far. They were very appreciative, many of the sellers, of saving what credit they had left and moving on with their life. It was really rewarding and at the same time, very much nerve wracking, but what a learning curve dealing with the attorneys, mortgage companies, et cetera. I learned so much. I used your program as the playbook and ran it as it was diagrammed. You can tell that guy's a coach, right? I'm either going to wholesale the deal, possibly use it as a lease option, 
or if the right cash buyer comes along. I have some great options in the deal. Currently negotiating with two other pre-foreclosures right now. Thanks for your advice. I really appreciate it. Look forward to trying all the strategies, Terry Walker. So here's the thing. When you decide to get radical, things start happening. That's what I want to happen for you. I want you to make the commitment to yourself, to your family, to your business. And this is going to be a way for you to do that. So right now, our system is $39.87. Now you've got two days of live training. You've got three days of video training. And you've got three additional days of audio training. You've got eight days of training, all for $39.87. Are we going to ask you to pay that? No. This is the correct slide. $199. Now look, if you're not doing this, you got to ask yourself if you're serious about your business or not. $199 per person for all of that, for every bit of that. That's a goofy number. I told Scotty I was going to do something crazy. When my CPA sees these numbers, he's going to say, yeah, you, you did. You did something crazy. All right. Now, some of you are going to want to come as couples or business partners, $299 for two. Yes, it's if it's two of you, it's double set on the materials, you bet. Mark your calendar, May 15, May 16, down in Houston. And look, we're going to do this live and streamed at the same time. I want you to be there live. I think you get more out of it live. If you can't, and the only way you can do it is to be involved streaming, then you join us online. Because the amount of content that you're getting here is just going to blow you away. And it's going to make you a better investor. And the more investors that I can make better and better and better, the better impact it has on our country. And that's what I want to do. My mission in life since I started teaching in real estate, and thank you, Bob Allen, for getting me on stage many years ago, is I see the impact that real estate had for me. I see the impact that I've had on other people when I did real estate deals with them. And I want to do everything I can to replicate that with other people so that we have more and more people out there that are providing value, value, value. And if you're doing that, incredible business. This is a great way to start. So here's how you get involved with us. You jump over to secrets to cash now.net. Secrets to cash now.net. You'll find a sign up page there. Pay right online, everything gets squared away. And then tonight and in the morning, you'll be opening emails and you'll say, holy cow, uh, when he said there's 26 hours of video content here, uh, he wasn't kidding about that. There's 26 hours of video content. There's three full additional days of audio content. There's another 385 pages of written content, which doesn't include the book that we're sending because we're sending every one of you a copy of Are You Dumb Enough to Be Rich? The Kindle version as a thank you for being on the call with us tonight. Now, Scotty, I got to tell you, I think we ought to do that only for the people that were on the call live. Totally fine. Totally fine, Bill. So, so if you're here, because I think you always have to be where the action is, the action's live. So you get uh, a bonus for being live with us tonight. And then I'm going to do something for all of you. This, I don't know if I said this to Scott yet or not. Um, you know, one of the things that I have found for folks around the country when I work with them uh, is so many times they go, I wish I could just have a little bit more time directly with you. And so one of the things that I'm doing tonight, and again, this is, this is only for the people that are signing up and they're signing up right now. Not uh, if you're on the replay, sorry, this doesn't apply. This is for the people that are taking action right now because those are the movers and shakers and that's the people that I love doing business with. And that is, I am going to give you a certificate that entitles you to three consulting sessions with me personally, not with one of my coaches. And I've got several great coaches, 
me personally, you get three of those and that's your take action bonus for tonight. Now that would be a, a typical thousand dollar bonus. So when I sell those, that's what they sell for. It's a thousand dollars. So you're looking at about $5,000 worth of total value tonight for $199 for a single person, $299 for a couple or wife, spouse, business partner, significant other, guy down the street, whatever. Jump over to secrets to cash now.net. Scotty, I told you that uh, when we wrap this thing up and we'd have a, a few minutes to be able to do what people were uh, putting in the chats and you had a chance to look those over. We, you want to touch base with that now? Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, we got a question here from her. says, don't know, don't really know how to get started. Where in the business to get started, get funding, not dependent on my personal credit scores, building a good team, marketing, how to do this correctly is uh, one question. I'll let you touch base with that first. And Yep. And, and I'm going to tell you, this is, um, I do it, um, about an hour and a half on this and in, in, at the live event where it just says there's a process. And if I understand where to get my funding from, and I can show you multiple different ways to put funding together, if I know where to get my funding from, and it is not dependent on your credit. See, when I got started in the business, that wasn't an option for me either. And so I had to figure out how in the world can I make this happen without having to use up my personal funds or my personal credit? And then what I discovered along the way is that it's important to learn to do this business without either of those because you will run out of those somewhere along the way if you're using your own money. And people that have a little bit of success coming into the business so many times they just wanna use their own money and it's the wrong way to build a business and it'll yep. hold you back every time. So you're going to actually a good spot. And I'm going to tell you, I think you always start with flips because it's going to create the biggest check in relationship to the amount of time. And it is something that you can do without having to have any of your own cash involved. See, next question is here is uh, we got confidence from a few people. People struggle with confidence. And then the, obviously the no cash on hand, less than yep. broke, like kind of like you talked about there, which is no surprise. So on, on the confidence issue, let me, let me just throw this out there. There's a reason why in anything that we do in life that we don't have confidence. And the reason is we haven't done it before. So I want you to think about this for a second. Um, many of you, and I bet some of the people that made those comments, Scott, are parents. And I want you to think about, my, my little German <laughs> shepherd is going nuts back there. I want you to think about the first time you had a kid. And you see this with, if you don't have children, then you see this with parents. If you pay attention to, to parents, especially with little ones, you know, they're, they're just, so overprotective that it's insane. And part of that is we don't know what we're doing. And so we overreact. Then the second one comes along and it's a lot more relaxed. And then the third one comes along and they pretty well take care of themselves because, hey, you find out they're probably not going to break anyway. So <laughs> we lack confidence because we're not familiar with that. You know, if you ask me to come in and, and do your job, many of you have uh, full-time jobs right now. If you ask me to come in and do your job, the likelihood is I wouldn't be able to do it to anywhere near the proficiency that you do it at. Why? Because it's your experience. It's what you know. This is what I know. The difference is I'm going to teach you how to do this. And in doing that, when you're learning from somebody, now you got to resonate with them. Hopefully that you've had a chance to do that with me. I hope so. If you resonate with them, you're going to listen to them. And if you listen to them, you're going to do what they tell you to do. That's why I love people that have athletic backgrounds, military backgrounds, police, medical, because they're used to, if you will, taking orders. So that when I explain this is how you do it, you don't get a lot of pushback it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to go do it that way. And I always tell folks that I work with, hey, look, 
I'm going to tell you how to do it. I'm going to ask you to do it that way for six months before you go changing it. Then if you still change it and you find something that works better, I hope I'm the first person you call to tell. But the likelihood is you're going to do it the way you're taught to do it. So confidence comes from understanding what it is that I'm going to go do. If I know the parameters, I'm going to be confident. Bob uh, Allen, one of the great lessons I learned from him, because he's been a mentor of mine for many years. He no longer is involved in the real estate world. But Bob said, look, you want to learn something inside out, volunteer to teach it. Mm -hmm. And that is so, so, so spot on. So uh, if the more you learn and the more that you have confidence in the people that you are learning from, your confidence will go up. So you don't have to necessarily have confidence in yourself. You need to have confidence in me. If you've got confidence in me, then you're doing what you were told to do. And now that confidence transfers to you. There's several people on systems, structure, uh, somebody scared because they uh, almost lost a house previously through poor advice, they said beforehand. Uh, got a question, Ron asked, what's your favorite book on putting deals together? Or what's a good, good book that you like? Well, I'm going to tell you, I think there's not a real estate library out there that was complete without a copy of Are You Dumb Enough to Be Rich in it? So we're <laughs> going to do that, that tonight. Now, I want to tell you a book I think is absolutely fabulous. I, I uh, suggest this book all the time. There's a, a guy named George Ross. George Ross um, was former President Trump's real estate attorney for many years. They wrote a book together called Billionaire Tips for the Small-Time Investor. And I, I've read all the Trump books. I love them. But they are business philosophy books. This one book, because of George Ross's involvement in it, is a how-to they go through seven deals, um, top to bottom, several of them taking many years from beginning to end. Uh, and George walks you through. So billionaire tips for the small time investor, I think is a, is a terrific book. I love Kiyosaki and rich dad, poor dad. A lot of that is more philosophy uh, as well. But uh, from a, a how to standpoint, if you've got a copy of dumb enough, if you've got a copy of billionaire tips, you're in pretty good shape. Mm hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, guys, if you're running into the question like, hey, it's, it's only showing it for one ninety nine. Sign up twice. We'll go back in and automatically credit 100 off the second order. If you're signing up for you, plus your spouse. Um, for some reason, it's not letting you pick the two and drop it to two ninety nine. So just order it twice. We'll go back in and manually fix it and, and knock off uh, the right amount for you guys either later tonight, first thing in the morning. So um, yeah, we'll get that done. I don't know what's going yeah. on there. We'll get that squared away for you. Don't worry about yeah, it's, that. It's, it's pretty easy to fix. Uh, looking for a good VA experiences. Uh, let's see. Uh, move my move past my past. I've seen this from a couple people on here. You, you, I want to say something, guys. You can't live in the rearview mirror and and expect to get down that highway. What happens when you look in the rearview mirror and that's all you look at? You end up running into the ditch again and again and again. You gotta <laughs> quit worrying about. You gotta take that rearview mirror off like you're in a convertible and throw it down out the window and just focus Amen. on your future. As, as Bill said, uh, we we're successful at it because we do have the scars. We do have that thick skin. Every deal is not a home run. Every deal is not a a, a, a single or double. But you get beyond the bad deals by going and doing more deals. Things happen. You just have to keep going and going and moving up and being flexible and agile, mobile, as my coaches say, even sometimes <laughs> hostile <laughs> and, and move where the market's going to take you and where's it going to go and learn from people who can give you counsel, not advice. Everybody can give you advice Take like an time. asshole. Everybody can what? give you advice. Yep. What a Not great right statement. What a great statement. You bet. You got anything else for us there, brother? No, I think that's about it. Everybody else is kind of falls in, it, you know, it's uh, some of the same, same things there. Guys, we use the, that second link for that bit link. What worked? I just tried, but secrets to cash now.net. Yep. 
Get signed up for that. Guys, the bonuses are for those that are on here tonight. Don't wait to watch to tomorrow night or tomorrow when the replay goes out. Take the opportunity. Secrets to cashnow.net. It's still, though, guys, two-day class. Is the, the class by itself, if people don't sign up and see this later on, they can get the class for the 199 which is not the bonuses, right, uh, right Bill? Yeah, what uh, I'm going to give them part of the bonuses uh, from the replay. What I'm not giving them is my time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so if you're signing up tonight, I believe you take action. That's what I've always been taught is you take action. When do you take action? You take action now. Bob uh, taught me one time, one of the great lessons. I use this all the time. I teach it to every team I ever coach. I teach it to every class I ever have, which is say yes to the opportunity, clean the mess up later. Mm. So <laughs> For those that say yes to the opportunity, you're going to get three consulting sessions. That is only for the people that are on the call tonight. That are, is only for the people that are signing up tonight, period. Uh, I don't mind uh, sharing the other bonuses with people on the replay, but they don't get the take action bonus, which is the consultings. Got a question from somebody. Uh, the 15th and 16th, what time is it ending on the 16th for flights home? Um, Second day, yeah, I'm going to block it till five. Uh, if you have uh, 3.30, 4.15, whatever your flight home is, if you will let me know when you check in what time your flight out is, then what we'll do is we structure as much as we can uh, so that people not having to rush when they leave. Uh, also, a lot of times I'll have, uh, and this will be done streaming, so I will have it recorded. And so if you're, if you're leaving uh, at 3.30 on, on Sunday, we'll make sure that you get that uh, so that you've got everything that we cover. Uh, I want you to have the full experience. There's going to be, uh, we're going to have that available for everybody that attends in person. You'll have access to uh, the replay for the entire uh, two days as well. Nice. Guys, you'll be emailed the link for the book. We're not providing the link tonight. We'll get that right out to you guys for those. Yeah, we'll actually, uh, it's an attachment that we're going to send to you. So uh, Scotty has, if you signed up, Scotty's got your email address and uh, we will actually send you that uh, direct attachment to the link. Um, yeah. And uh, it is a Kindle. You'll love it. And uh, it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yep. No problem. Um, let's see here. Another question comment. Ricardo says, thanks guys. No problem. Uh, Ricardo, glad to help. hope to see you there. Uh, let's see here. Ernest, thank you. Says, thank you. Terry says, I look forward to, uh, thank you so much for the book and look forward to passing it on to somebody else as well or paying it forward. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Uh, good stuff guys. Look, the best thing you can do, Bill's been around, but taught great strategist knows his business. If you're looking in different markets, something mentioned, about Indianapolis. If you're investing in Cleveland, or you're looking at Indianapolis. Look, there's a lot of great markets out there. The Midwest, I've been investing up in the, those states for years because it's like what Bill said, it makes a whole lot more sense and the cash flows are great versus what we're seeing in a lot of places here in Texas or Austin. So you just got to keep your, uh, your nose to the grindstone and know how to go search more. You don't have to jump on a plane and go do it these days. There's a little tool called Google and the internet <laughs> yep. and resources to make things easier for you than beforehand. So uh, totally encourage you guys, if you're looking, if you've had a bad experience or looking to do something new, what a great way to start things off. Look at, think about what your end of your 22, 22 or mid year of next year will be. If you start off on the right foot now and get rocking and rolling. And this is a great place where you get started guys. Amen. And look, uh, for those of you that uh, we've all been there where we kept looking satchel page, uh, the great um, black baseball pitcher in the hall of fame. Um, I said, you know, I never look over my shoulder because I might see who's gaining on me. <laughs> exactly. That's good stuff there. Well, Bill, I want to say thanks, man, for coming on Absolutely, Night in America here tonight. It has been a blast. Let me bring on your, uh, let's just start your video up and I'll start mine back up here. Cool. Uh, cool. 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 Good stuff. Anybody else got any questions tonight here on Monday night? Before we let Bill get back to letting his uh, beautiful German, German <laughs> shepherd out and go, to, go water the yard. <laughs> oh, oh, good stuff. I, I was relieved. Uh, she could have been um, quite a bit louder. <laughs> so, 
She did a well, great job tonight. So, Scotty, hey, brother, it's always a pleasure. And I just want to thank everybody for being on with us tonight. Uh, come down and spend a couple of days with us. I promise you it's going to be fun. Uh, you're going to learn a lot, and we always have a lot of fun. So come down and join us uh, May 15 and 16. What hotel? Do you know what you the hotel picked out already? Don't yet, know Bill? the hotel yet. So we'll, we'll be getting that squared away in the next week, 10 days or so. We'll let everybody know uh, <laughs> What uh, what hotel will be? We'll probably be toward downtown. That's my norm, but we're we're not locked up yet. All right, man. Well, hey, Bill. We'll talk to you later, guys and gals. Thanks for jumping on Note Night in America, and uh, go out, take some action, and we'll see you all at the top, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody.